uh, you would like to review this again, it will be on the orientation section of the CMC parent website. Uh, the parent website is cmc.edu slash parents. Uh, and we hope that you use that uh, as a jumping off point for um, many, many, many years to come. Uh, at any point, feel free to reach out to any of us, whether it's DT and the wonderful team and Dean of Students, uh, the great team and the Office of Alumni and Parent Engagement, we are all here to help answer questions and support you and your student moving forward. If you have any questions at any time, feel free to use the chat box. I'll be monitoring the chat uh, for Diana during the presentation and uh, either interrupting her or holding off on questions until the end, depending on the flow of the program. So with that, Diana, thank you for being here. Welcome, everyone. And I kick off the program to you, DT. Perfect. Thanks, everybody. Great to see you. I'm sorry if you got a little feedback there for a minute. One of our tours walked by and uh, the tour guide said, everybody yell hello to DT. So that, that's what they did. So I'm sorry if that got a little um, loud on your end, but uh, really glad to see you. And this is an important topic. I am joined today with uh, by two of my Dean of Students colleagues, and I'm going to ask each of them just to quickly introduce themselves. I'll start with uh, Jess Nielsen. Hi there. Uh, happy Monday. I'm Jess. Um, I'm our Senior Assistant Dean for Mental Health and Health Promotion. I've been at the college since 2017. Great. And then Lynn? Hey, everyone. I'm Lynn Hughes. I've been with the college for about 13 years. I am an administrative coordinator, and I am the, the school administrator for the SHIP program, for the Student Health Insurance Program. Beautiful. All right, so here's what we're trying to accomplish. We want to make sure that you have a little bit of information about this big transition that's coming up for your student. We want to give you a sense of what our goals are um, in terms of their health and well being, how we partner with our parents. We want to give you some tools um, for supporting them because odds are they're going to call home at some point and something is not going to be going great. And you may be going, ah, what am I supposed to tell them? So we want to give you some resources. Um, and then also just want to answer any questions and it can be around health and well-being, but can also be about anything else going on at the college. If we don't know the answer, we will know where to point you. Um, so to start off, this is the, um, the unusual part of Claremont McKenna, which is that we are a part of a consortium. So as you know, there are seven colleges that actually share basically one contiguous campus. Five of those schools are undergraduate and all of us are sharing resources for these um, kind of auxiliary groups. So our campus safety department, um, Chicano Latino Student Affairs, the list goes on. So as we're talking about some of the resources today, including health education, outreach, student health services, and MCAPS, which is our counseling center, keep in mind that those are resources that are shared by all of the campuses in Claremont. Uh, there we go. Okay, so to start off, let's just think about residential life. So some major shifts going on for your students. They're going to be sharing spaces with others. For some of them, this will be the first time that they've shared a room. They're going to be doing their own laundry. They're going to be having to get along with other people. They're going to have to be thinking about managing different noise levels, the time of, of night that people go to bed, scheduling their own appointments, their personal finances. Um, just waking up on their own in the morning and getting to class. So there's a lot of pieces that go into this. And the family, like the residential part, um, just want you to keep in mind, like they're, you know, they're without you, they're without siblings, they're without pets. And that's actually a big one. So, you know, just thinking about what are those things that are sort of like comfort, comfort levels um, within the residential life. And there are some transitions there that, that we're aware of and we want you to keep in mind as well. On the academic front, we're really thinking about having to probably read a little more than they did in high school, um, having to be really self-disciplined. They're not in the same class every single day. And so having to think about, you know, if I have class on Tuesday and Thursday, what do I need to be doing on Monday and Wednesday to get myself ready for those? Um, the assignments here are going to require a different level of kind of intellectual engagement as well. And sometimes that can be a tricky thing to, to start to sort through. And we have a lot of resources in place to help with that element of their well-being. So everything from our Romero Success Coach program, where students can come and get help with executive functioning skills. How do I tackle a certain type of assignment? How do I think about this particular course can be really helpful. And those folks will also help with things like um, sleep. And how do I want to think about my, um, my overall approach to time management and the kinds of commitments and things that I want to pick up. So we'll dive into that a little bit more as well. 
social life. Um, our students are really active here. We have very few people that kind of sit in the room and study all day. And that's, that's by design. We've created all sorts of opportunities for students to get out there and put into action all of these amazing leadership qualities that they're learning in the classroom. Um, but within that newfound freedom, they also right, need to be responsible for sleep and fitness and their own diet. Um, responding to their health needs. So sometimes our students will come and they they already have um, a health concern that they're aware of. And now they're for the first time going to be taking on the full scope of that responsibility to manage that. Um, good decisions about sex and alcohol and drugs and all of the things that are presented out in the real world. And it's time for them to start thinking about what do they want their relationships to look like. Um, and then thinking about not over committing to the co-curriculars in such a way that it compromises their academics. So we are foremost an academic institution, but because we have so many amazing opportunities, we do a lot of conversation with our students on how to strike that right balance so that they are staying focused in school and also having the kind of social engagement experiences that they want as well. So to do that, we have actually um, developed a framework. This will be familiar to many of you um, in terms of kind of a socio-ecological framework of well-being. And the idea here is that we're being really attentive to the developmental level of our students. Almost all of our students are somewhere between the ages of 17 and 23. Those are really big developmental years. And over the course of those five years or four years, as they're growing at the college, they're also uh, accumulating new experiences and their overall sense of, of their own well-being starts to shift. So we're helping them to think about that from an individual lens in all of these various dimensions of well-being, but not just the individual. How does my individual well-being impact my relationships, the broader community? How do we think about that in the context of a greater society? And so as the students are coming up against things that might be really challenging, that's where we step in and we help to have those conversations so that they can stay grounded, so they can be thinking about really concrete behavioral things that they can do, the agency to shift their own well-being and to take some ownership of their health. So that's how we think about that part of it. Um, some of the resources that we have in place, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Jess to talk about. And these are, again, some of these are consortium and some of them are more in-house, but just want to give you a sense of the different resources available um, before we start to take some questions. Jess? Awesome. Thanks, DT. Um, Okay, so from that very first slide that DT shared, there are a, um, a handful of 7C wide resources. And so I'm going to spend some time talking specifically about two, and then we'll um, kind of break off into a couple of other um, resources and support options on campus. So I'm going to talk about student health services for some of the physical health um, support and Monsoor counseling and psychological services to talk a little bit about mental health support on campus. So Student Health Services is located in Tranquata Center. It's pretty central to all of the campuses. Um, and this is where students are going to go for some pretty basic health needs that might pop up. They are um, open Monday through Friday, um, regular business hours. This is where folks are going to go if they need um, uh, different tests and screening. I won't run through all of them, but you know things like confidential HIV testing, uh, strep, um, TB, blood pressure, some labs, um, they do basic um, x-rays as well. Um, anything, cold, flus, health services is a great place to go. These appointments are free if students make appointments. Um, they also offer, you know, a, a handful of services that they'll do kind of, you know, they'll charge a la carte, if you will. So if a student needs basic labs, um, if they need some limited x-rays, some minor suturing, um, things of that nature, um, there'll be a, a charge for that. Um, one thing to note is that if a student is in need of services after hours when student health services is closed, or if they need care that is beyond what health services can provide, and if your student is on um, the uh, on SHIP, the student health insurance plan, there is a way to have that deductible waived. Um, and so we can talk a little bit more about that in, in detail when we get to health insurance. Um, but just want uh, families to know that. So if your kiddo is having to go off campus, um, that deductible can be taken care of if they can't receive services here. Um, a lot of sexual health um, services as well at student health services, health education outreach, which is um, kind of an educational programming um, piece of health services also provides some of these supports. Um, health services in January also um, 
added gender affirming care to their services. So that is now available for our students. Um, after hours support uh, is offered through 7C Health, which is also known as Timely Care. This is a really great thing for you to know. Um, we're going to make sure that our students know all about this for both physical and mental health needs. This is 24 seven access to free care from um, licensed professionals, doctors, nurse practitioners, therapists, psychiatrists, um, and, and students can either schedule appointments uh, for therapy or um, you know, uh, talking with the doctor, or they can uh, drop in and do kind of on-demand support. And all of that is free for students um, while they are here at CMC. So really great option for them, um, especially if they just kind of want eyes on something, if it's late at night or a weekend, um, and then those folks at Timely Care will refer to um, outside individuals if further support's needed. Yeah, just to add, this is a really nice resource for the things that pop up where they're going to call you. So they're going to call and say, you know, I, my throat is so sore, or I've been throwing up since 10 o'clock, um, that kind of stuff. And so it's just reminding them, you know, before we send them off to the emergency room, which is it's just scary for them. Instead, let's get on 7C Health, let a doctor take a look and, and make some recommendations. So student health insurance plan, um, I can give a general overview. Um, students have likely heard about this um, many times already, um, and Lynn is here to answer any questions you might have, but all students are automatically enrolled in our Aetna plan, um, and then they can submit a waiver to be removed from SHIP um, and stay on your family plan if that is what they would prefer. Um, and coverage began August 1 for new folks. Did you have anything you wanted to add to that now, Lynn? No, I don't have any questions. Please feel free. Awesome. Um, so the other uh, big service that is available to all students at the seven colleges is MCAPS. It's Montessori Counseling and Psychological Services. Um, so this is our mental health hub. Um, they are staffed with licensed um, psychologists and clinicians, and they offer what they refer to as brief counseling, um, brief individual therapy. So if your student is coming into CMC knowing that they want a long-term relationship with someone, um, you know, as far as a clinician, then we might want to seek um, outside or additional supports. But Mansoor is really great for transitional support. Um, if there's kind of a, a environmental or something that happens that they really need to talk through a breakup, um, you know, issues with transition to college, leaving home, um, wanting to learn some coping skills around anxiety or depressive symptoms. Um, Mansoor is fantastic for that. And um, they also have a handful of um, psychiatrists that work um, on site. And we also partner really closely with 7C Health, like I mentioned, for psychiatry services as well. They offer um, screenings for anxiety and depression. They have a clinician on staff who specializes in learning disabilities and ADHD. They offer a number of groups. So like group therapy sessions, as well as different um, skill-based uh, support groups. So skills on how to manage against symptoms of uh, depression, anxiety, stress, those sorts of things. Um, they have a number of student groups for um, different populations on campus, different needs, women's group, men's group, student of color group, um, a queer support group, a grief group, um, things of that nature. They've done like yoga, art therapy, things like that. Um, they are also available for crisis intervention during office hours, and, and we've got a pretty robust um, uh, process in place for if we need to work with someone who might be in distress after hours, we partner with them through our office. Yes, yeah, so we had a question come in about um, how they get the information uh, for SHIP. I put the link um, that I found on the website in there, but if there's anything else in terms of policy info on SHIP. Awesome. And um, I see another question. Yes, any student can make an appointment at Student Health Services on campus. And yes, those appointments are free. Also, I will post the direct uh, link to the Aetna Student Health site, and you can find lots of helpful information there, including how to find a doctor that's in network and the plan brochure and, and so forth. I'll post it in just a moment. Awesome. So, um, so some of our kind of in-house, and when I say in-house, I mean CMC within the Dean of Students Office um, support in these areas. Um, all of us on staff, you know, will support um, a student um, in terms of well-being and, and wellness resources and, and support, um, but our case management and health promotion areas 
um, are designed to work with your students to really make sure that they're getting connected to those resources, whether they're on campus or off campus. Um, so we do a lot of work, um, myself and um, my colleague Chantal, um, with working individually with students to make sure that they're getting the support that they need, whether it's a therapist on, you know, um, online or here on campus, finding someone in network with their insurance. We work with Lynn on that a lot. Um, we also do a lot of referring to other types of supports on campus to hit some of those other you know, dimensions of well-being. So um, connecting students with our academic success team, uh, with the Romero success coaches. Um, we work with folks who might want to kind of create like a wellness plan to reach specific goals that they have for their health and their well-being. Um, we do a lot of work with social engagement and belonging and connecting folks with our um, student clubs and organizations. Uh, students who might be coming to campus, whether it's their first time or they are transitioning back after some time away and who have, you know, specific medical or health or well-being needs, we make sure that we're um, supporting them with continuity of care from home back to campus. Um, and then any of those transitional challenges that, you know, that we spoke about, we make sure that we're connecting folks out to different areas on campus. A um, handful of other resources, um, a hand, uh, these have already been mentioned for the most part, um, but our Romero Success Coaches um, is a group of a dozen or so um, students who are uh, who go through a lot of training um, to not only support students with some of those um, academic uh, hurdles that might come up, um, but they really support with overall um, well-being, sleep management. They help with prioritization, organization, those executive functioning skills that DT mentioned, um, tolerating stress, how to cope in those really stressful moments like midterm season, final season, when some of our um, existing coping skills kind of go out the window because remembering that we are now in a new environment. Um, a lot of our students that are coming in know how to cope at home, um, when certain stuff comes up and now they're in a brand new environment and they need to learn new types of skills. And so the Romero success coaches are great for supporting um, in that regard with kind of holistic um, success at college. Um, 7C Health we've mentioned, which is also known as timely care. You'll see both of those um, supplemental counseling. So we are unique at CMC in that we work with a handful of off-campus clinicians um, who specialize in various areas, um, who come to campus and either do individual sessions or hold drop-in hours for our students or hold different groups, um, like group therapy or group support options for different needs that crop up. Um, so th those are always updated every semester online. And then our Peer Health Ambassadors is a brand new programming um, effort started this past spring. Um, and it's a group of uh, peers, a group of students who are trained in a variety of health and um, wellness topics and are tasked with going out uh, into the campus community and doing a range of educational um, workshops, um, events, programming efforts. So they will be out and about um, you know, working with your students as well. All right. Thanks, Jess. So just, um, you know, some tips for all of you. So let me let me start this by saying um, I'm a parent as well. I'm sending my oldest off to college this year. So these are all questions that I know, you know, I'll be asking of of his institution as well. Um, and it, and with all of the resources that we've mentioned, maybe the one I want you to remember the most is that we have 24 seven campus safety and public safety department. So if your student ever needs anything um, on the back of their ID card, and they are going to hear this over and over and over again, they can call that number and they will get connected to somebody immediately who can help them, whether that's giving them that reminder that they can call Timely MD or we have an on-call dean. So 24-7, literally every day of the year, including the summer, we have a dean that is on call. We have a special phone um, and they are connected to campus safety. So if a student calls campus safety for any need at all, um, they will immediately then patch them through to an on-call dean who can have that conversation and really support the student. So um, just want you to, to remember that that's there. And every now and then, you know, we'll have a parent call and say, I haven't heard from you know, Joe, since Tuesday, that's pretty unusual. Can you check in on him? And we will absolutely, absolutely do that. Um, so things to think about, listening carefully. So just, you know, remembering that often your students are going to call home when they're 
not doing as well and they'll call home less when things are going great. So try not to read too much into the call that is teary and all of that, but, but ask them some of those questions that we're gonna ask them. How much sleep did you get? Have you eaten yet today? How are you feeling? Um, some of those reminders that they need to take good care of themselves because anytime you get depleted, managing things gets a little bit harder. Um, to the extent possible, let them make their own decisions. They're gonna learn so much in that process. Um, remind them of, to go to office hours, to stop by the Dean of Students office. We can absolutely help them with anything that's going on. Um, help them really enjoy the process. Learning at a place like this is incredible. You are part of a scholarly community that demands much, um, but offers much. And not being so fixated on the A's and B's, but instead thinking more about like, what am I learning and why? What's the meaning behind all of this can be really, really rewarding. Um, if you haven't had the conversation about healthy decision making recently, revisit it. So go back in time to when they started high school and think about things like alcohol and um, sex and all of those conversations that we all have with our kids and maybe just revisit those if it's been a bit. Remind them to seek help. And we have all of these resources and we didn't develop them because we thought one student was going to need them. We developed them because, again, this is a developmental period in a person's life when a lot of stuff surfaces and they're in this really rigorous academic environment. So we expect that they're going to have some moments where things aren't going nice and smooth. That's part of the process. But if they're not seeking help, they're really leaving money and resources on the table. So just remind them they have all of these things. And if they can't remember where they are, come to the Dean of Students office. If your student has a pre-existing condition, that could be a chronic health issue, that could be some mental health stuff, that could be a learning um, difference, make sure that they are very aware of it as well. Um, you'd be surprised how often a student gets here and they know that they've been receiving accommodations, for example, but they don't really quite know why um or how that accommodation is impacting them and so it's important just to be talking about that especially if they're on any kind of medication um, reminding them to stay on that medication to think well ahead of refills um, especially if they're on a mental health medication if they go off of that really quickly that that often results in a lot of um, angst and it just doesn't go well physiologically for them so keeping that in mind um, now that they're in college, FERPA has come into play, which means we are not able to disclose parts of their educational record without their permission. So you won't be able to call, for example, and find out what their grades are, or if there's an attendance issue, or anything about their health records. All of those things are protected under FERPA and HIPAA. There are... Um, exceptions to that are ways that students can exempt from that. But if you want them to do that, you'll want to look up the waiver forms online and have them sign them. But they have to sign off for you to have open access to their educational records. Um, if you're coming with independent insurance, please make sure they have their insurance card and that they know how to use it. If they're on the, the student health insurance plan, they can go on that website and they type in their um, ID number and their birthday, and then they'll be able to run their card and print that easily. The Live Safe app, we will talk to them about this, but it's an app that all students at the Claremont Colleges have access to on their phone. And it's for little things like escorts. Um, so they, you know, if they're at the library and they'd like a safety escort back to campus, they can go on the Live Safe app. It also has all of these resources that we just mentioned pre-programmed. So they can just go in there and, you know, if they don't remember the number of student health services, they can quickly go on that app and find it and immediately get connected and then send them with some kind of a wellness or a health kit. So if you have, you know, they have medications that they like when they're when they have the flu or when they have a bad cold, that kind of thing, send it with them so that they have that stuff in hand and, you know, kind of the comfort from home um, and that familiarity of what to do. OK, so this is the information um, for those of us that are on the call. And if you want to just, you know, even just remember our names or just mine, even DT, um, I will be able to connect you with whomever you need. And I think what we're going to do is stop now and just take as many questions as you have. Great. Thank you, DT. Thank you, Lynn and Jess. If you have any questions, you can uh, either put them directly into the chat right now. I think we've answered all the ones that have come in so far. Uh, you can also uh, virtually raise your hand in uh, the reactions tab if you'd like to ask it directly.
Can you please talk a little about dental and physical therapy coverage included with SHIP? So dental is only covered for students who uh, have not reached their 19th birthday. Um, and so the, the dental coverage is separate. You would, there is a SHIP plan that you can go on. You do it, you do it individually. You do it um, directly on the Gallagher Student Health site. It's not through the school. Um, so we don't provide uh, dental insurance through that. The, the one exception to that would be if the, they had to have dental work as a result of an accident. And if there had to be something like that, that would probably be covered under the Aetna plan. Um, with regard to physical therapy, they would get a referral from student health or from their their doctor, their doctor they're using through SHIP, and then that would they would go forward. It would be covered just like uh, we can look up the coverages if you'd like. It's usually 80-20 in the student health insurance plan. Thank you. Question about uh, copay. If there's a copay each time you visit uh, the student health center. Yeah, there is not a copay when you visit the student health center, um, but you do need to make an appointment. So I think there's a small, it's like a $15 copay if you just drop in. So you're better off to get online. Every student can access this through their health portal, which is where they uploaded all of their health forms and their immunization records. So they already have a health portal completely created. So they just go in there and then they can make an appointment that works for them with their class time or you know other conflicts. Question that came in actually for uh, Parents Weekend, um, and I'll answer that one. Uh, we have one family weekend. It is President's Day weekend, as Jen, you note there. It is Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So a lot of people do fly in on Friday, but there's no programming. Um, we take advantage of that three-day weekend. We have great programming on Saturday and Sunday. On Monday, you can attend the Athenaeum and hear an Athenaeum talk. You can also visit some classes with student. Um, but we do hope you all mark your calendar for President's Day weekend each year for the next four years. And we do rotate programming so everything stays uh, stays very fresh and very fun. Um, so we hope you come to that. Of course, um, you know, we're always open for visitors and we have lots of great athletic opportunities over the weekends. Uh, but I do recommend you always connect with your students um, about when you come to campus uh, as they may be busy or not here or have a midterm or paper due um, the following week. Anything else on Family Weekend, DT or Jess or Lynn? Nope, it's so fun. It's definitely worth coming for. And book your hotel rooms early. Also that. For, for all things. Um, Monica's not able to uh, make it to campus for move-in weekend, uh, but we'll be coming to campus Thursday and Friday that week, so later on in August, so after the kids get back from Woe. Is she able to do a campus tour? And if so, who does she schedule that with? Yep, absolutely. Um, and you can just schedule it through the admissions office. So all of the tours run through admissions. So you just schedule that way. Um, at that point, your student might be able to take you on a tour. They'll have been here a bit and be pretty familiar with everything as well. But if you want the formal tour, you can organize it through the admissions office. While we're on uh, on the topic of students returning from WO, um, would you perhaps talk a little bit about what they're going to learn either at WO or that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday after they come back? What does that look like? Yeah, for sure. So the WO trip itself, let me just kind of run you through the whole schedule. So basically the students are going to arrive on Sunday. The bulk of that day is going to be spent unpacking and just kind of getting their bearings with all of you. There's a lunch session. Um, and then in the afternoon, the students are going to start to pair up with their woe groups. And they've all been assigned what are called FIGS, first year guides. So the first year guides, they actually arrive at the end of this week and they will be going through all of their training and getting and getting prepared to welcome our first years on the 20th. Um, as the students sort of pair off to do that, then the parents are going to have an opportunity to spend some time with me and other colleagues in my office to talk more about campus life. Um, they'll also have a chance to talk about the academic requirements and meet with people in the Soul Center for student opportunity relative to things like internships and career opportunities moving forward. Then everybody will come back together. We're going to have a big welcome session um, followed by dinner and the goodbyes and then families head off. And our students will have a session with uh, my team and our first year guides just thinking about, whoa, how do you get to know each other? How do you start to build some relationships? How do you start to make friends? And we really want to facilitate that with them and for them so that they're not overwhelmed because it's a long emotional day. 
Monday, they leave for Woe. They will go on either beach camping or cabin camping trips. All of those have already been assigned, so they know where they're headed. And then when they come back on Wednesday, um, Wednesday afternoon is really low key. They're exhausted at this point. So they take a shower, they catch up on their phones because they've, they're have they not on their phones during their Woe trips. Um, they get organized. And then orientation really starts up um, pretty significantly later Wednesday night and then Thursday. All day Thursday is academics. They're going to be meeting with their advisors. They're going to be getting familiar with all the academic requirements. They're going to be getting familiar with all the academic resources. So the ones I mentioned today, as well as the Center for Writing and Public Discourse, the Quantitative and Computing Lab, tutoring, accessibility services, all these things happen on Thursday. And then on Friday, they register for classes. Um, and they will do that. There's a computer lab that they can go to if they want support or they can also just do that from, from their computer. So they'll have a designated time, they log in, and they're gonna enter the classes that they've discussed with their advisor. Um, they'll also have a chance to visit a bunch of tables with all of the different uh, majors and different faculty who teach in those majors just to get to a little bit more familiar with all of the different potential pathways through the college. Um, Saturday, there's a lot of work that we do around the social, um, social life here. So we talk all through, you know, what does it mean to live in a residence hall? How do you do a roommate agreement? Um, what kinds of social things do you want to get involved in? We do all of that. And then Sunday, everybody's off and then we start classes. So it's a bit of a whirlwind, but they get all the information they need. Thanks, TT. Um, Jess put the FERPA form in the chat. So right. thank you would like to review that feel free to click on the link that Jess put in there um talk a little bit more DT about RAs resident assistants in the dorms how CMC kind of does uh, dorm matching and configuration and upper class sure. middle classmen and, and kind of the role RAs play and figs play in health and well-being yeah absolutely so we have a, a little bit of a different system than some schools whereby we don't have dorms that are only for first years or only for sophomores or only for any other type of group. About 20% of all of our residence halls are reserved for first year students. And, um, and that's how they're placed. So they go through and they fill out their roommate preference forms. Um, and then we go through and match all of them up with people who are, who are similar to them. We try to get people into their first or second choice of quads. So there are different sort of residential corridors or quads on campus um, that doesn't always work but sometimes that that works out and then all of the roommate assignments went out a couple weeks ago a little over a week ago so people now have their their people um, who they're going to be living with and starting to sort through all of that in every residence hall we have um, at least one often two ras so resident assistants these are seniors or students in their last year at the college so we have a handful that are in a 3-2 program where they depart after their junior year, but all of them are in the final throes of their CMC academic career, and they receive a lot of training. So it's everything from emergency response to community building to conflict mediation to um, de-escalation strategies to emergency evacuations. I mean, these are kind of our, our paraprofessional staff that are on the ground living in the residence halls. The role at CMC is more of a um, kind of like an older brother or sister role. So they do a lot of accountability, but they also do a lot of support and coaching and mentoring. So at some schools, RAs are a little bit feared. They're the people that like write you up and send you, you know, to conduct. And that's not really the, the focus here at all. They definitely help with policy enforcement. But they do that from kind of reinforcing what are the community expectations of all of us and how do we hold one another accountable to those and, and take care of one another. Um, so they all have office hours where students come or open hours where students come by and just chat with them and they host events and it's a it's a really good system. Great, thank you. Um, North Quad does not have air conditioning. Tell us some some tips and tricks if we have a student in North Quad this year. Yeah, it, it'll likely be warm. Um, there are a, it stays pretty hot here through September um, and sometimes even a little bit into October. It almost always cools off at night, but we do have some hot days. Some of the things that we work with students on, um, they're not permitted to bring the air conditioning units, the ones that have any kind of exhaust filter through a window. Um, 
the electric grids in the city of Claremont cannot manage those. So we don't we don't permit those. So students bring fans for sure. Um, keep your blinds closed, you know, all during the day so that the heat doesn't doesn't come in and and take over the room, open things up at night and pull in the cold air. Um, we also will do some things on days where, you know, if we have a week where it's going to be multiple days of, of 95 or, or higher, um, then we work with our students to help them get, you know, some air mattresses if they want to sleep on the floor in a friend's room in mid quad, for example, for a day, or um, if we have some empty rooms and air conditioned buildings, we'll try to move them through there. But generally speaking, you know, I, I want to remind you, yes, it gets hot. We've also been here for 75 years in these halls without air conditioning and every single person has been okay, um, myself included. I don't know if Evan ever lived in North Quad, but uh, it, it can be toasty, but we will work with them and help them. And then we do some fun things like we open up the pool at night and that kind of thing to help people cool down before bed. Thanks, DT. Uh, someone asked about how they update their health insurance. Um, their child is covered under the health plan provided by my company and I might change my health plan. So how do we, how do we update? You can you can reach out to me and I will work as an intermediary with Gallagher Student Health, our administrator, and we can get that updated. We can get the information. Thanks, Lynn. Mm -hmm. um, we had a question about how many students are in the freshman class, the class of 2027. We're usually about 330, but I don't know the exact number, DT. Do you know? We are at, let's see, with transfers, I think we're at 348 in total and we have about 20 transfers. So whatever that put us at. Three, three, 28. 28, three, 28. Right. All right. I think we have answered. Oh, there's a question about actually a class selection. I'm not sure, DT, how how uh, involved you are with um, with the academic advising process and the class selection. And mm -hmm. one of, any any thoughts there? Any advice you have for for parents to tell their students? Yeah, I, the big advice is don't panic. You're going to get, they are going to get a lot of support in this process. It's virtually impossible to not do the first year correctly. Um, there are a handful of majors that are very sequential. So for example, if a student wants to do our 3-2 engineering program or science and management, um, then we would urge them to take a science class in their first semester, but they're going to hear this a lot. Every student is going to take a first year seminar course, um, whether the fir first year of humanities or the first year writing seminar in the first semester, and then they flip that and take the other half of that in the second semester. And then from there, there are a whole range of GE requirements. They're going to get familiar with all of them. We have students that are trained to help with this process. They're going to meet with their academic advisors. They're going to hear from lots of faculty, the registrar's office. And then we are available all the time to help with course selection. So it will all work out, I promise. Um, not all the time do you get the class you want, but you are going to be in classes that you need. Great. A uh, question about prescription coverage. Are prescriptions covered under the health plan? I assume they're meaning the SHIP health plan. Yes, they are. And um, the, I think it's the same 80-20. And again, um, we, you can uh, go to Aetna Student Health or to the CMC website under uh, health insurance information, and you can find that waiver for deductibles too. So you can use that. Great. I think I have addressed all the questions in the chat or Jess has responded to them um, if appropriate. Anything else that we have from our parent community, feel free to put that question in now. And of course, if I miss something, feel free to add it again uh, and we'll ask that question. Um, while we wait for that, anything, Lynn or Jess or DT, anything that we, we didn't cover that you think would be worthy in, in, either in this realm, of course, of, of student health and well-being or Anything else as we prepare for that Sunday move in in 13 days? I would just say we've got them. We really do. You have done such a good job with them. They've made it this far and um, we've got them from here. And yes, the RAs will be around the whole day. So they are, you'll see them. Yep, you'll see all of them. When you, when you come to move in, we're gonna have lines of students ready to help you take all that stuff from the car and get it to the rooms. All of us are gonna be there welcoming everybody. Um, We'll have, yes, we've got you. We really, really do. I know it's a lot to sort through, but um, we cannot wait for them to come and we're ready. Right. For our parents, of course, for parent orientation, uh, the check-in is a little bit different than the students. So students, I believe, check in by 
dorm quad area, right, DT? Correct. So they all have a map. They know exactly, well, they should know, but they have a map where they've been assigned to go. So there's a location if they're in the south quad, the mid quad, or the north quad, um, and they'll just show up there and there'll be people ready to help them. And then the parents, go ahead. Parents, please join us at Emmett Student Center, um, the hub that is uh, kind of a cafe study space. It's also, also where the Saul Center for Student Opportunity is, as well as McKenna Auditorium. Uh, we'll have an area for information gathering snacks with a lot of our parent volunteers there. You'll get your credentials um, for the day as well, uh, meal tickets for lunch and, um, and dinner as well. So make sure you stop by Emmett Student Center uh, sometime before lunch. Uh, and meet the rest of the alumni and parent engagement team, advancement team, and of course our parent network board members who are there to help you with your um, your engagement and transition as well. All right, anything else? Well, fantastic. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all in 13 days. Uh, oh, a question came in. For those from outside of the US, will info on banking and credit cards be given? detail a little bit on that. Yeah, so international student orientation starts on this, they move in on the 17th. So they're here a little bit earlier, August 17th. And then there are two days of orientation specific to that international student experience, which includes info on banking and credit cards and cell phones and visa status and all of those things. And we do recommend that international parents come for that international, that move in piece, but also stay for our programming on Sunday. Um, there will not be any redundancy there. So please do stay if you can for Sunday as well. All right. Well, we hope to see you all Thursday, August 10th at 9 a.m. Pacific time for introduction to the Saul Center for Student Opportunity. That's um, for career services and many other things that are very unique to Claremont McKenna College. Uh, once again, Thursday, August 10th at 9 a.m., you can find the registration info on the parent section of the website. With that, Thank you all very much. I'll stick around, DT, if you want to stick around for a few minutes and sure. any questions who uh, didn't want to put in the chat, we are happy to stick around. Otherwise, have a wonderful afternoon and evening and see you soon. Thanks, everyone.